Many students get very much intimidated when they are to write out a stockholders or shareholders equity section of the balance sheet. It's not that scary if you have a clear understanding of what this, this structure really looks like. This is a graphical representation of this section and I'm going to go ahead and point out some key elements for you. So obviously we will start with the equity section itself. It has two main parts to it. The first one is paid in or contributed capital. That's the amount that was received from the shareholders. They paid in into the company or they contributed that capital. And it may not have been necessarily in cash. It could have been services or um, assets that they brought in to start the cor corporation. The second one, retain earnings. Um, two words, they're exactly what they are. Earnings retained in the corporation, meaning not given away as dividends. So year to year, you will have net income and net losses coming in. Um, and then you will distribute dividends out of this section. And then whatever is left is retained in the company. The third part that is usually uh, presented at the very bottom of the section is what's called treasury stock. And if you see, I try to make them yellow and I put it in parentheses, why? Treasury stock is subtracted from the whole equity section. Um, if we take a look at the paid in side of the equity, it separates into two big parts. The first one is capital stock and the second one is additional paid in capital. Um, there are two major parts of capital stock, which will be your preferred, maybe I'll put triangles by them, and common. Preferred is usually listed the first. And you would, you can have three additional paid in capital from preferred, from common, and from treasury stock. Now, please do remember overall that if you take a look at these accounts, all these uh, normal equity accounts, their balances will be credits. Not on the balance sheet, just overall their bal balances are credits. Treasury stock is a contra equity account, so for this account, normal balance will be debit. Now, if you were to take a look and open any balance sheet and take a close look at the equity section, you will see all of these written out, but they're all the same except in writing, and this is a graphical representation. I hope it was helpful for you. Let's take a look then um, on the effect of a stock split on shareholders equity. Let's say you only have currently one share right here, one share of common stock, and it has a $10 par. And you're going to go ahead and split it into smaller shares. So now you have two shares. And obviously your par value went down. Better pick a better color. Par value went down to $5 a share. So again, you have two shares now. And they're $5 each. But let's see if anything else changed. Your overall common stock total dollar amount stayed the same. See that rectangle looks exactly the same. Capital stock, exactly the same. Paid in capital, exactly the same. And guess what? Your stockholder or shareholder equity did not change either. So the only two items that change will be number of shares. You used to have one, now you've got two in par value per share. Students often get confused on the effect of declaration and distribution of uh, common stock dividends. And let's take a look. First of all, to have a very good understanding of what actually is going on, it is um, important to have a handy diagram of the whole equity section. And I also recommend keeping these journal entries right in front of you so we can see what's going on. If you take a very close look through these journal entries right here, 
you will notice that every single account that is affected is actually an equity account. There are no assets or liabilities. So everything that is going on here will involve only equity and nothing else. So let's take a look. First, first of all, it's very important to understand so that regardless whether dividends were declared and paid out in cash or you distributed stock dividends, they will come out of retained earnings. It's not some kind of rich uncle overseas that will give the dividends on your behalf. It will come out of retained earnings again. So your retained earnings will go down as a result of stock dividends. Then what else? You will give out common stock right here. Common stock. As a result, your common stock will go up and your additional paid-in capital for common stock will, will go up. So let's take a look. It looks to me that you take capital from this retained earnings bucket. Here's my bucket with a handle. And you, you put it into these two buckets. One of them is common stock with a handle. And the other one is additional paid in capital from common stock. And that's it. So let's take a look again. You took capital from retained earnings and you put it into paid in capital or contributed capital. As a result, your total stockholders' equity did not change at all. Sounds interesting, but it again, it did not change at all.